Okay, so I've just clicked record um, and we're on. So I might uh, just quickly give you guys a brief introduction on who I am. Um, some of you might not have uh, attended a webinar before. Um, some of you might recognize me from last week, but my name's Mary and I'm the new health educator here at Arthritis New South Wales. So I'll be one of the people you can connect um, with here at the organization if you have any questions around your condition or you have any questions coming, um, you wanna direct to the hotline, I will be uh, the one behind the computer responding to those. I'll also be um, responding to the e-news articles and the questions and um, putting you in contact with some of the services we have here available at the organisation. A little bit of background, I have a strong nutrition background. I was a clinical nutritionist and a lecturer before I came on board here. So any nutrition related questions, more than happy um, to sit back and have a chat with you about those. Uh, so what we'll do in terms of housekeeping is um, once I finish the recording, like I said a little bit earlier, if you want to stick around and um, have a bit of a chat, I'm more than happy to. At the very end of the presentation, I'll leave the, I'll open the floor to any questions you might have. If you haven't used Zoom before, I'll let you know of a few functions you uh, can be aware of. The chat box for one is where you can ask all your questions, respond to questions. Um, it appears to be a little speech bubble uh, that you can click and type into. I've just had one person comment that you can't hear anything. Uh, do you want to check if your sound is switched on? Is anyone else having a little bit of difficulty hearing me? Tony, you can hear me okay? Yes, Mary, I can hear you clearly. Great. Um, Narelle, maybe you can um, have a look at the settings below and see if you can switch up that sound and see if that makes any difference. Um, so you'll notice at the bottom, we have switched on subtitles. And so if they do happen to get a little bit distracting in the function area on the Zoom, you might be able to um, click CC and that will switch off the subtitles. That's only if you find them to be quite distracting. Um, otherwise, feel free to leave them on. And if you could all switch uh, your microphones off uh, while we get started, that will be wonderful. Okay, so today's session is about carer support. So providing care to for someone um, with arthritis. I've had another person who stepped in and mentions he can't hear anything. What I'll do is I'll pause the recording. Okay, so we'll just continue on and hopefully we can troubleshoot some of those um, challenges uh, while I continue. We do have a disclaimer here. It's just to let you know that the information that we cover here today is just to build your understanding and provide some general advice around managing arthritis. We do make sure the information we share with you is evidence-based, it's accurate, reliable, in saying that it really shouldn't be a substitute for individual treatment advice. So should you have specific questions about your condition, um, you should always speak with your doctor or primary healthcare provider in that instance. Okay, so what tonight's webinar is about is really helping you understand arthritis. And so if you are a carer of someone living with arthritis, or even if you're here to learn a little bit more about your condition, caring for yourself, we'll take a deeper dive into that and what caring looks like. So there is a lot to know about caring for someone with arthritis and hopefully we're able to unpack some of the key things you need to know about um, providing that care. So it can be challenging 
And so we will briefly touch on those associated challenges um, and the greater impacts it can have so we can then um, delve into talking about some solutions and some practical tips. There are a lot of different resources um, and services available to support you when you have either received a diagnosis of arthritis or if you're caring for someone with arthritis, there is a lot of support you um, have available and schemes available to make that caring journey a little easier. So what I'll do is I'll bring them to your attention just in the case uh, you haven't been made aware of them. So at the very end of the presentation, I'll show you, um, we'll direct you to some services and support networks for um, reference and uh, share some links and hotlines with you just in the case they could be very helpful for you. So what I've got here is just a little bit of an overview of the data that was pulled out of the National 2022 Carer Survey. Um, so what I want to highlight here is that what we know is that across New South Wales, we have approximately 854,300 carers. This is the equivalent to almost one in eight people, one in three primary carers care for their partner, one in four care for their child. And on average, following a diagnosis, 14.6 uh, years is the average length of the caring role. So I highlight this information to you to let you know that you're not alone. If you are caring for a spouse, a family member, a child or a close friend, Often it is because we love the person that we're caring about. It can bring us feelings of fulfillment, compassion, um, companionship, satisfaction. It could be just that you are improving someone you love's quality of life. And so there could be many other reasons as well, like personal growth, development of new skills, new challenges. Um, or it could even be in the case where no one else is available to provide that care. So often we care for a combination of personal, emotional and practical factors. So the role of a carer is specifically to provide care and support to a family member or a friend or loved one with a chronic condition um, such as arthritis. And so what I want to share with you is that there are over 100 different types of arthritic conditions which affect the musculoskeletal system. More specifically, they do affect the joints and how these symptoms manifest in someone, it does um, depend on the type of arthritis they have been diagnosed with. Uh, the most prevalent forms of arthritis that we see are osteoarthritis, which is a non-inflammatory form of arthritis that consequently follows the wear and tear of the cartilage in load-bearing joints. The other most common type of arthritis we see is rheumatoid arthritis, which is more of a pro-inflammatory form of arthritis that is associated with an autoimmune disease. And so what I want to find out a little bit more about is what brings you here tonight. If you are here as a carer, I'd love to hear from you in the chat box in terms of who are you providing care for and what type of arthritis do they have? If you're not here as a carer, I would also love to hear from you and hear about what you hope to learn about today. It might not be that you are a caregiver, but you're here to learn um, some things about caring for yourself even. Nero, I'll try, um, I'll just pause the recording. You, 
So Tony, your mum has arthritis, osteo, and you would like to understand a bit more about how to support her. It's great. Okay. So I guess if you're providing uh, care to someone, the role of a caregiver is multifaceted. When you're caring for someone living with arthritis, the key skills required are really built on understanding, supporting and communication. What I want to highlight is that in your caring journey, there will be some things that are within your control and some things outside of your control. In most types of arthritis, uh, pain, the discomfort, the distress, anxiety, depression, and frustration are very common experiences. When you see the person that you love and care for in pain, it can be really challenging that you're not able to help them completely alleviate the pain. And so it can take some time to accept that being pain-free is not going to be possible as some of these arthritic diseases are degenerative. But with time and more understanding around the condition, it can help you find better ways to support that person living with arthritis. Um, if you're here for yourself, understanding your condition is really key to um, self-managing the symptoms and particularly the pain. So the key to understanding arthritis often involves educating yourself, learning more about the pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatment options. These include exercise, there are mind-body techniques, stress management techniques, and there's also different government funded services which may be available for you to help address the needs of someone living with arthritis. So these things are within your control and not only beneficial in that it can help with the longer term management, um, but as a carer, it can help you provide better support. So if you're here for yourself um, or if you have a key role in advocating for the person you care for, which involves you being their voice and ensuring they receive the necessary care, support and resources to manage their arthritis, communication is really going to be essential to understanding their specific condition and how to go about best supporting that person living with arthritis. So this brings me to communicating effectively. So in order to build your capacity as a carer and advocate for the person you care for, effective communication with medical staff and healthcare providers is going to be really important when you want to make sure that your loved one has the right people involved in their care and the right treatment options available for their specific needs. Um, and so if you're attending the appointments or you're picking up the prescriptions, don't be afraid to ask a lot of questions, whether it's about what treatment options are available, what are the possible side effects, what do I need to look out for? You are encouraged to ask the healthcare professionals that are involved in their treatment about their roles inquire about the different treatment options available, what's being recommended and their efficacy. If you need to, don't be afraid to take lots of notes or even request a leaflet or a website to refer to later on. As a carer, don't be afraid to ask for help. So if you're looking after someone who has a more severe form of arthritis, there's going to be good days, but there are going to be very bad days. If, you're, if you start to notice anything out of the ordinary, or if you have concerns that arise, you can always discuss them um, with someone from the healthcare team, or you can even seek a second opinion, but make sure that you don't hesitate to ask for help.
I want to go to um, this question, do you know what arthritis looks like? So there are many different types of arthritis that exist, all which are very painful. So the hallmark symptoms of arthritis usually include pain, stiffness and swelling around the joints. Now, often in osteoarthritis, the pain will be more localised in a specific joint that has deteriorated over time with that wear and tear. In rheumatoid arthritis, because it is an autoimmune disease and because it is inflammatory, the pain can affect different sites in the body. And this is just because of how the immune system ramps up the inflammation and attacks the cartilage in the joint. Over time, this can cause damage and it can exacerbate the pain cycle. The main joints that we see affected in arthritis are usually the knee, the hip and the spine. But not only does it lead to these painful symptoms, it can also exacerbate other symptoms like fatigue. It can affect mood, energy levels, behaviours, ability and willingness to participate in social activities. And so to understand how these specific symptoms are affecting your loved one, you can ask a lot of questions about how their arthritis is affecting them today. What type of medication do they need? What tasks and exercises can and can't they do? Um, and if they're experiencing a flare up, they might have uh, found a preferred pain management technique or a strategy that just works for them. So it can really help to have a conversation about what their preferred um, pain management strategies are. The chronicity of pain and the symptoms can really vary on a day-to-day -day basis. It can come and go. And as a result, I can imagine that your caregiving duties would probably look different on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So what I want to talk about are just some of the um, key things that are going to be involved in providing care to the person living with arthritis. So physical activity, um, regular exercise can really help manage arthritis symptoms, improve overall health. And usually the joint friendly exercises are going to be prescribed by certified exercise specialists to help increase strength, lubricate the joints and nourish the cartilage, which are going to be beneficial for um, the longer term management of arthritis. It can be a bit scary to engage in um, physical activity, especially on a bad day. So um, what you can do as a carer is encourage your loved one to do low impact exercises, stretches, find out what they can and can't do on a bad day. And even for your own uh, long-term health, you could even join, join them to ensure that you're getting your physical activity in. With nutrition, um, you might have a more hands-on role in doing the groceries, cooking, um, feeding your loved ones, your family, and correcting the nutrition can not only be beneficial for controlling that inflammatory responses during a flare, it can help with other things like longer-term weight management, which will help with that longer-term protection of the joints and hopefully prevent that further degeneration. So the weight management component here in treatment can be very beneficial in that it can help alleviate some of that um, pressure on the joints. And we'll speak more to that uh, very shortly. Assistive devices. If you haven't uh, looked into these or if you're not familiar with these, walking aids, grip aids, um, special kitchen utensils. All There are assistive aids available which can help um, make daily activities a lot easier for your loved ones. So the need of assistive devices usually depends on the progression of the disease and where the arthritis has is located. 
Um, but in order to access these, you might actually want to consult with a physical therapist or an occupational therapist to identify the right assistive devices for your loved one. Um, or if you're here for yourself, um, you can. there are some organisations you can actually look at their websites and you can see what um, assistive aids are available. Medications are the most common form of um, treatment for pain. So there are a lot of different medications that are used for pain management, a lot available over the counter, but also prescribed. They do all have different mechanisms and we'll touch on that shortly. But what I want to really highlight here is that they don't treat the condition, which is why we also talk about building your understanding around um, non-pharmacological treatments um, for the longer term self-management and awareness um, that they can actually help with not just pain management, but improving quality of life and well-being. Uh, the final um, domain here is planning for the future. So if receiving a diagnosis of arthritis can bring about a lot of uncertainty in terms of the future for both the person living with arthritis and the family, the spouse and the friends. And so you do want to um, talk to your loved one openly about the future. Consider discussing long-term care needs um, financial planning, legal arrangements, even home modifications. Later on in the seminar, I've um, got a section where I will talk a little bit about the different government funded schemes that are available and how they um, might be appropriate um, for you and your loved ones. So the provision of care can really change over the years and particularly more in the advanced stages of the condition. So what we want to make sure you take away from today is some strategies that can really help equip you for that longer term um, management. So exercise, I'm sure you have all heard of it before, but there are extensive amount of benefits to exercising and staying active for arthritis. There are going to be some days that are easier to complete some exercises, but therapeutic exercises are often prescribed by a physio or an exercise physiologist, which are tailored specifically to the um, the person living with arthritis needs and limitations. Exercise really needs to be encouraged and supported because of how it can help strengthen the muscle around the joints, which can help with things like improving joint stability, increasing strength, protecting the joint through movement, all which can help in pain management reducing stiffness over time and this is why exercise falls into those um, main treatment categories. There are often a variety of joint friendly exercises that are low impact and gentle such as walking, swimming, sometimes cycling which are encouraged to help build strength, increase flexibility, increase movement um, and some days it can be more challenging than others to stay motivated. To keep the person you care about motivated, your encouragement, emotional support can really go a long way. Um, you might be able to help them warm up uh, for some of their exercises. You could help them track their progress by logging their exercise routine, make sure they have comfortable attire for exercises, but even in terms of your own long-term health, staying active is crucial. And so um, it is really important that it's maintaining, um, staying physically active and exercising regularly is, you know, a part of the treatment strategies in your household. If you do have any injuries or limitations and you're not sure what exercise is going to be appropriate for your loved one, um, 
or even yourself, certainly speak with a doctor or a health professional. Um, they will have lots of information and programs available on the um, that resources that you can access to read more into um, exercises specifically for arthritis. So we also have a lot of information and programs available on our website that can really help. If you're not aware, we have a Get Moving and a Get Moving Plus program. Um, this is coordinated by our team. And there's a lot of information you can access on the website if you wish to look more into those. In terms of the best diet for managing arthritis, it is a common question that comes through. And the best response I usually give is a simple, healthy one. Some types of arthritis are inflammatory and sometimes the pain cycle that is associated with arthritis is exacerbated or worsened by inflammation. So inflammation can be influenced by a lot of different things in the body, but more it can be worsened by things like excess weight, processed foods in the diet, high intakes of sugar, saturated fats, alcohol. And so adopting an anti-inflammatory diet style diet in the household can be really beneficial for um, targeting a lot of those different um, components that are involved in driving inflammation. Um, improving weight management, supporting long-term bone health, uh, reducing inflammation. Research has even shown that a 5% of total body weight loss can improve joint function by 30%. So adopting a healthy diet with a lot of fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seafood, legumes, beans, these can really be beneficial for implementing that anti-inflammatory style diet and also long-term weight management. Um, so I'm not sure if all of you have heard of the Mediterranean diet. It's another form of an anti-inflammatory diet, but very effective for um, bringing in a lot of different nutrients, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals that are effective for targeting inflammation in the body. So foods which are common culprits for triggering inf inflammation, I really encourage you guys to avoid them. You might want to look into investigating if these are your specific trigger foods um, or if you notice the person you care for eating a lot of these trigger foods, you might want to look at um, at least reducing or removing them from the diet. As a carer, it can be really hard sometimes with such little um, time on your plate as it is. It can be really easy um, to rely on quick, convenient foods. Um, if you feel your diet is something that you really need to work on more and, or you want to work on more, um, usually a good starting point is planning meals and snacks ahead of time. Having a plan in place for the week ahead can really go a long way, especially when you are caring for someone else with um, very specific needs. For more specific dietary advice, it can be really beneficial with consulting um, with registered dietitians or nutritionists who can help uh, you and your loved one eat healthier. And so what they usually do is factor in your specific needs, your preferences, and they can help you put together a well-rounded diet that's going to work uh, for you and it's going to be conducive with you and your loved one's uh, health goals. There is a online program that's available. Um, it's based, been developed by the New South Wales government. It is called the Get Healthy Program. And you can see a lot more information about it on the website. And basically, you can get receive a free consultation. You can have a discussion with someone about your specific needs. I would definitely encourage you to check out that website um, if you are interested in changing up your diet. 
Okay, so assistive aids. Um, as a carer, you can actually support your loved one in selecting and using assistive aids that help in managing their symptoms. There are a number of different aids available which could be beneficial for them uh, long term. And it does depend again on how severe the arthritis has gotten, which joints have been affected. But by speaking with an occupational therapist or one of the organizations that can help with um, in providing uh, these assistive aids, they can help in organizing these and these tools. Um, for a better daily functioning. So there are special tools that are available for gripping joint braces or mobility aids. Often to acquire assistive aids, you do need to do a little bit of research. Um, you do need to um, look at the tools that are going to best fit the person's specific needs and the budget. Um, some tools are available for buying, some are even available for hiring. And so some, with some of the organisations, they will um, help you with a thorough assessment um, if it's required. And even depending if your loved one is eligible, there are some schemes under the NDIS or My Age Care, My Age Care who can help with funding for these assistive aids. You might be heavily involved in this process, then you might be required to um, help them select the tools. You might have a role in uh, learning how to use the tools, adjust them. Um, you might have a role in maintaining the assistive aids, like keeping them clean, making necessary adjustments. And so as a carer, you might want to learn a little bit more about what tools are available, how to go about using them in the household. So you, you can work closely with the healthcare provider to make sure that these aids are going to be set up and used correctly. So your encouragement here and your patience is incredibly valuable. And I would encourage you to have a look at some of these websites like the Nth Care, ADA, um, the Australian Pain Management Association, Assistive Technology Australia, and Home Modifications Australia. So there's a lot of different, um, there's a large inventory that on these websites that you can look at and you might um, think some of them could be useful in your household. So medications common use in pain management. This can be really challenging to navigate as a carer because there are so many widely available. What's important to know is that some of these medications can help alleviate mild to moderate pain um, temporarily, such as the analgesics. The co most common ones are going to be paracetamol and osteopanadol, which is a slightly higher dose of paracetamol and release a little bit slower, but is used to last a little bit longer and provide that relief from pain um, over a slightly longer period of time. Some of the other classes of medications work a little bit differently in that they act on suppressing the inflammation in the affected joints. So NSAIDs, which are your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, your and these are often used in arthritis because they're effective in reducing inflammation. So this can be like your ibuprofen, your nurofen. Um, they're over-the-counter medications, which can be taken based on the severity of pain in a given moment. So they work a little bit more effectively in that they can help um, suppress that inflammation causing the pain. The other more stronger um, types of drugs that are available for managing um, arthritis are going to be things like um, DMARTs, which are your disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, which not only work to reduce inflammation, but um, they do aim to target the underlying causes of the inflammation. So if there is inflammation coming from a very specific joint, um, they do 
they work to suppress this by suppressing the overall immune system. Um, your corticosteroids, on the other hand, they can be taken as tablets or they can be given by injection. And these would work to suppress the immune system in order to reduce the inflammation. So these ones can be used to treat rheumatoid arthritis or a single inflamed joint. Um, in order to receive this type of treatment, it does need to go through a doctor and a healthcare provider needs to um, prescribe this and administer it. So these type of medications are used for more moderate to severe um, pain when inflammation is present. Opioids are an even uh, stronger class of drug. None of these which actually fix the problem, which is why they need to be used with a lot of caution. And we emphasize on that a lot. As a carer, you can help encourage a person with arthritis to understand why their medicine is being taken find out what the possible side effects are. You can read all the medication labels, take them as directed. Um, you might wanna keep a personal record of all the medications being taken um, just to make sure that we're managing any kind of risk that comes with taking a lot of medications at once. Um, you as a carer can talk to the doctor or pharmacist just to understand what they're all about, um, even if there is some consideration in taking complementary medicines or alternative treatments like vitamin, mineral supplements, herbs, definitely talk to your healthcare provider or a pharmacist just to make sure that they're going to be safe for you um, taking. They're not going to be contraindicated with any of these um, pain management treatments. So you're definitely asked to, um, it's definitely best to speak with the doctor and be aware of what to watch out for. And, you know, going to the pain medication for relief can be an immediate response to really help your person out when they're having a bad day. They aren't always going to be the best solutions. And so we do really encourage you to explore these other type of pain management strategies like pacing, meditation, mindfulness, distraction. And there are a lot more um, other strategies available and evidence-based as well. We have some more information about this on our website. But pacing is becoming a more popular technique that it does involve breaking up activities into management portions. This involves taking regular breaks to rest, recharge, and the idea is that it prevents um, overexertion to reduce the risk of a flare-up. So it's more of a preventative technique, which can be really effective in conjunction with some other different strategies. Meditation and mindfulness are more techniques that um, can be beneficial in the case of a flare-up uh, and can be beneficial for the management of inflammatory conditions. Given there is a role in a stress and the hormones released from the stress and inflammation, incorporating meditation and mindfulness um, can be effective in a way to actually um, control that. It does take a lot of practice, but it can be built into you and your loved one's daily routine. Um, and we're starting to learn more about the efficacy of it. It's still quite a new area in terms of using um, these techniques for pain management, but the more we learn about it, the more promising it's becoming for um, pain management. Distraction is another helpful technique that really involves focusing the mind on an activity or task to take away the attention um, from the pain. I can appreciate that it's a lot easier said than done. And as a carer, I can imagine you thinking, well, how can I encourage um, distraction? But things like engaging in hobbies, listening to music, participating in social activities, watching a movie. These are all very simple activities that can 
help with distraction and help in reducing that perception of pain. So in terms of improving overall well-being, looking at these mind-body techniques um, it, and looking at integrating them into a treatment plan can have a really effective role in improving overall well-being, reducing stress, reducing um, those negative emotions that could help with that perception of pain and the symptoms. Um, often it's a maladaptive stress response that can be seen in more severe cases of arthritis. And so this is why we try to encourage and we try to speak to trialing these other um, techniques to see if they work for you. So caring can be challenging in a lot of different ways. It can be physically strenuous, and this will depend a lot on which load-bearing joint is affected, how much movement and stability is reduced. There might be times um, caring can be really physically strenuous. Um, if you're helping them find their balance, climbing the stairs, helping them with exercises and mobility stretches, you might also need to carry things from time to time. With these tasks, often the risk of injury increases um, quite a lot. And so this is why we try to um, look at the tasks that are being carried out and we try to look at ways to make them easier. Caring can also be financially challenging with costs for medication, appointments, treatments, transport, assistive devices. All of these costs add up. You also have this paired with the costs of loss in income, productivity. Um, and so it can be really financially um, challenging and stressful. Not only that, it can be emotionally challenging, isolating and stressful. The journey can be um, really lonely and it can require you at times to put your hand, um, plans on hold. It can also re result in reduced leisure time, um, less time and to enjoy the activities you like. Um, it can lead to social isolation. And so these supportive social relationships, at times they can be challenging to maintain when priorities and schedules are continually in flux. And so there's a lot of different responsibilities and demands that are taken on by a caregiver. And they do require a lot of um, cognitive input and emotional support. So this is where we start to talk about pouring for an empty cup and how can we prevent um, carer burnout. So you might have realized that there is a lot to actually know about caring for someone with arthritis. And carers can put so much energy into caring for um, others that caring for themselves becomes neglected. It can be really hard to fit in the time for yourself um, and look after yourselves. And this isn't really effective um, when you need to be caring for others. When, like we said before, you can experience um, feelings of fulfillment, companionship, satisfaction, but it can be really challenging at times. And so sometimes it's not uncommon where you could feel a partial loss of your identity. And so what we want to do is make sure that you're also looking after yourself. We've got some um, tips and solutions here to help you maintain your physical, emotional and mental health to prevent caregiver burnout. So building injury resilience, like we said before, um, the risk of injury is quite high when, you know, some of your jobs are physically strenuous. Um, but the key to building this injury resilience is exercise. If you're providing physical support, make sure you know how to provide it safely and speak with a certified health professional who's involved in the primary care to show you techniques for preventing injury. You also want to make sure that you're finding ways to stay active and you're working on building your strength so you can overall boost, boost your health. You can also boost your mood. There, in terms of financial planning, this is important because some of 
um, the costs that come with caregiving can be quite stressful. And so in the next slide, I've got some schemes to make you aware of that you could consider looking further into. Financial planning is really important for financial well-being. Um, and you know, if you find yourself unable to work at the same capacity you once had, these schemes might be able to help you just alleviate some of that financial pressure you're feeling and reduce that stress specifically attributed to that. Um, you might be the one who is continuously providing the emotional support for your loved ones. So make sure you don't forget to seek emotional support for yourself. If you reach out to family, friends, or even a support group who can help you manage the physical, emotional, and practical challenges of caregiving, it can make the journey a little bit easier. Uh, for some jobs, workplace flexibility isn't really possible, but if you're in a position where you might be able to work from home, you might find benefits from making flexible workplace arrangements. If this is something you have been considering, don't hesitate to have this conversation with your boss. Also, taking regular breaks from caregiving is really important for preventing burnout. And it's really important that you get the rest that is well and truly needed. There are a lot of respite care options available that you could consider looking into. Um, the Commonwealth Respite and Care Link Services provide free and confidential information on local carer support. They could be useful for discussing potential respite care services. My Age Care website as well has some more information on support services that are available for a short-term or long-term respite care. So when you are providing care for, say, your spouse, it might result in reduced income, maybe more expenses. Here are some of the schemes we have in Australia, which you or your person living with arthritis might be eligible for. If you're an Australian citizen or a permanent resident, you should have all have access to Medicare. And so this is where the following schemes might be of interest to you. The short-term restorative care package, um, which is the first scheme that you're seeing here, is designed to provide flexible care for older people who really want to preserve their independence and autonomy with the help of a multidisciplinary team. So this could involve the treating GP or the geriatrician, can involve nurses, occupational therapists, physios, podiatrists, dietitians, depending on what the needs are, it's a really good package for future planning. It does sit outside of the My Age Care um, um, home care package scheme. And so would it be available to those who are already receiving this um, package? But if you're not, this program includes a 63-day intensive ongoing care in the home and um, to learn self-management strategies for um, achieving an optimal level of independence based on goals and needs to minimize that uh, need of care over a longer period of time. The next one you might be aware of, but it's the chronic diseases management plan. This is more of a structured approach to care, which is prepared by the GP. So there are two types of plans that sit under this scheme, including uh, the GP management um, plans and the team care arrangements. The GP management plans usually cover the costs, the full costs of five individual allied health services over a 12 month period. And so if a select provider um, accepts this um, plan, um, you'll be eligible to receive um, five treatments under this um, care plan. The team care arrangements might be prepared in the case there are multiple conditions existing at the same time. So if there's any other kind of chronic diseases 
that have been diagnosed like cardiovascular disease or type 2 diabetes and the needs are a little bit more complex, this is where the TCAs um, come into it. They do require collaboration between the GP and the other healthcare providers, but um, they will fully cover the cost of those allied um, health services. The last one is the um, pharmaceutical benefits scheme, which is available to reduce the cost of medication. So under the PBS, the government will subsidize the cost of certain medications, most analgesics, um, anti-inflammatory, anti-rheumatic drugs are usually covered but um, if you have a concession or a pension card, this will further reduce the costs of uh, certain medications. And so it's definitely worth asking the GP or the pharmacist about this scheme and regularly reviewing that medications that are used in the ongoing pain management. This can help with just alleviating some of that financial pressure that is felt when um, continually needing to kind of pick up prescriptions. With my age care, it does sit a little bit outside of Medicare, but it's still a government initiative. So there are different levels of support which could be available to either you or your spouse and the person you care for. And more specifically through the home care package, if um, the person you care about is of an older age past uh, 65 years. In terms of general support around the house, like cleaning, personal care, meal preparation, um, there is assistance that is available from one or two allied health services. And even if the person is planning to um, go through with an elective joint surgery, there is short-term respite care that is also available. And so the cost of these services are partially funded by the government. They do incur some fees, which you would be required to cover, but there is a lot more information available on the My Age Care website and fact sheets. And what I do want to kind of make note of is that a face-to-face -face assessment is usually required for this particular scheme. It's often completed in the home, but... Um, it, the assess, time to complete this assessment is variable, but it's worth looking into if you are eligible or not. The last scheme I want to bring to your attention is NDIS. So this is more applicable to those who have received a diagnosis of juvenile arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. They're more likely to meet the eligibility requirements. If they have a substantially reduced functional capacity or, or reduced psychosocial functioning, if their capacity for social or economic participation is affected um, and are very likely to require support under the NDIS for the duration of a lifetime, there are different funding packages available which are tailored to give the person choice and control over the services. So this scheme, you do need to see if you are eligible for. If you have very specific questions regarding um, eligibility criteria, definitely jump onto the website. I've also linked the hotline at the very end of the presentation. And again, it would be worth seeing if you are eligible, if it means it's going to take some of those financial pressures off. So adapting to adversity, so the physical impacts, the emotional, the psychological impacts, um, there's a lot to navigate as a carer, but practicing reflections can really help you build your self-awareness, practice acceptance and teach you how to listen to yourself. So what I've listed here are some prompts to help you reflect on your output as a carer. It's definitely worth thinking about what is currently working for you and the person you care for, what isn't. What are you happy about and not so happy about? What is causing you stress? What can you do and what should you not do? Um, can you take some time every day for yourself, even if it's five minutes? 
Are you prioritizing the most important daily tasks? Is what you are thinking about helping you or harming you? It's also not, um, don't be afraid to seek out more formal support if it's required. So this is where you want to think about if you need, if it's okay to keep providing the informal support. There are some circumstances where you might be required to look at more formal support. Have you also reached out and accessed the carer support services that are available? We've got some additional tips for the carer, which include um, understanding the conditions. So understand that you can grieve, be emotionally affected. It's good to be really open and honest about feelings, coping mechanisms. And so you do want to acknowledge your feelings and grief. Learn to listen because sometimes just listening to your loved one is all they need. You might not always need to be actively trying to fix them, reduce the pain or help them. Uh, sometimes listening just goes a long way. If you acknowledge your feelings um, and grief, this is one step closer to gaining that acceptance. It's good to be really transparent about um, how you're feeling in this caregiver journey. Accept that you won't be able to make the pain go away. This is a really big one. So this isn't, sometimes all you can do is really just be there to support them through their pain and provide that emotional support. Making plans flexible. So it can be really frustrating sometimes um, to have a planned day out or, you know, sometimes your loved one didn't sleep or maybe they're having a flare up and in too much pain and they can't participate in the activities you had planned. Sometimes having a backup plan really helps instead of, um, you know, opting for um, plan A, which might involve a bushwalk being planned. Maybe you could do something else like driving to a lookout or um, going to the cinema. You can ask how you can help best. Sometimes you want to know what a good day and a bad day looks like, but you can just ask um, what support or help they might need. Um, it's best to ask them what they want and how to help them. And this way you still get to help them, but it's also going to be more specific to what they need. It's also um, about celebrating the small wins. I think sometimes. Um, you know, just appreciating um, the small th things that have made your loved one's uh, day a little bit easier or a little bit better really go goes a long way. It can be challenging to look for the silver lining, but with acceptance and understanding, hopefully you'll be able to um, appreciate that, you know, this doesn't mean um, that your quality of life has to be is destroyed or it's going to be poor. There are things that you can still do to maintain a really good quality of life. And so embracing the caring role as well, this comes with practicing acceptance again. So it can be really um, difficult in terms of, um, oh, that's not what we wanted. It can be really difficult to embrace a caring role at times. It's very challenging, but um, how it makes you stronger and the more adaptive you become, the more you're able to kind of find yourself, find the benefits in being a carer. Um, but you do want to make sure that you're focusing on things that you can control. And it goes back again to differ differentiating what is within your control and what's out of your control. So I want you to think about um, what does self-care mean to you? So taking some time out for yourself to do the things that you enjoy, even just for a couple of minutes a day, can really help reduce stress and boost your mood. So I want you to think about what's important to you, what do you value, and what do you enjoy? If you want to share some of those things in the chat box, I'd love to see 
what are the most important things to you if you're reflecting on, um, you know, self-care? We have some support groups here. Sometimes it's really, it really goes a long way to connect with other people who really understand what you're feeling and they have felt what you feel. So I guess we've got uh, listed here some support groups that you can join to as a carer. Um, and these can be online or in-person peer support groups. The Carer Gateway is an excellent site that looks at support specifically for carers. If you're a carer of someone living with juvenile arthritis, there is a parent support group and it's available through Arthritis New South Wales. I would encourage you to jump on and check it out. And those um, organisations that I referenced a little bit earlier on, the NDIS, the Medicare, My Age Care, Beyond Blue, Lifeline, Kids Helpline. These are hotlines that can really help you understand what you need, what your, the person um, you care for needs and help you put together a bit of a plan to um, make their journey a little bit easier. So I've just got some takeaway points here. Um, you know, as a carer, it's important to help the person you care about, but make sure you're um, not forgetting to help yourself too. So don't be afraid to ask for help and access support services. At Arthritis New South Wales, we have an info line that you can call up anytime um, if you need some further support around any of our services, our programs, um, which might be able to make your lives a little bit easier. So that brings us to the end of the presentation now. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm also happy to um, pause the recording. If you wish to contact me, this is my email. I hope you all have that now. I'm just going to everyone in the meeting. So my email is nzagotsis at arthritisnewsouthwales.org.au if you wish to contact me um, directly, definitely. Uh, send me through an email and I'd also love to hear your feedback. So um, tomorrow or the day after, I always forget that tomorrow is public holiday, um, you will receive a link to um, provide some feedback and I'd love to get your thoughts around what topics you'd like to hear more about, what information would you like to receive more detail on um, and definitely open to hearing your thoughts. So thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, guys.